Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm building the Airfix 148 scale kit of the Hawker Sea Fury FB11. Now, if you've got one of these kits and you want to see how to put it together, this is the video for you. If you're thinking about buying one, would just like to know what's in the box, what options there are for decals and so on, then the companion video to this is the one that you should be watching first. If you just want to sit down, kick back and watch some model making, but also get some bonus historical material, then the combo version is the one you should be watching and that drops the day after this is released. So look out for that. Now, if you like these videos, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link to do that is the small logo down there in the bottom right corner. You can also support future productions by going to Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon. Links to both of those are in the information box below. There's also a link to the Airfix online store. If you go through that and buy anything at all, then at no expense to you, the nice people at Airfix give us a few pennies to make some more videos for you. Okay, all of that out the way, let's get on with making the Hawker Sea Fury 148 scale from Airfix. I always start by spraying some pieces on the sprue. Many things I'll do in a base of aluminium before applying a top coat of the interior color, here black, as I think it gives a nice texture. This includes things like the propeller. And also spray the inside of the fuselage. Onto the parts now, and this seat is black, but I'm adding some brown to the leather work. The cockpit tub is black. I'll just dust it with a very fine sanding stick to reveal some of the aluminium highlights below. Then I'll fit the control column and the rudder bar. The instrument panel is already painted black. You can dry brush this if you like, or use the decals. In this kit, the decals are in small sections, meaning you don't have a load of excess clear areas to dry and flatten out. Now, that's a very good idea. And on this front panel, I'll bring out some of the rivet details using a thin wash of gray. Onto the construction then, and the sit fits onto the rear cockpit member like so. Then the instrument panel goes into the cockpit. It slots into place easily. Then the front bulkhead or the firewall sits at right angles to the floor piece. Then there are two pieces of side structure with various bits of detail, one on each side. And the cockpit tub area is complete. Next, I'll spray the base primer of the aircraft. This was called Hawker Yellow. The closest thing I can find is this yellow zinc chromite I got for a Buccaneer kit a while ago. With some weathering, it will look better than the linen color Airfix recommends. It's sprayed on all the exposed internals, such as the wheel wells. Now I can fit the cockpit tub into one side of the fuselage. It sits very well on its locator pins. This front spar goes in, as does the tail wheel well. Then the fuselage halves can be attached. This is a pretty good fit, so just tape and clamps as needed to hold it all together. Now the main gear well. First these actuators sit on the main beam of the fuselage. This will be a pain later. The beam then sits into the main wheel well. Note this is painted that yellow chromite as well. The whole thing then goes into the bottom of the wing. Now be careful, the actuator arms stick out below the wing piece. They will get bent and could easily get broken. Very poor design, I think. Anyway, when it's in, clamp it to set. The next bits to fit the gun barrels, here you can see one set has deformed. Now, I'm not a plastics engineer, but I would have to guess that the plastic wasn't cooled enough before the moulds actually opened. Normally, I'd ask Airfix for a replacement and they would very quickly send me one, but I don't have the time in my schedule. 
Anyway, the radiator grill goes into place, followed by the guns that survived. I'm going to fix the lower wings of the fuselage now and tape it all together. While it was drying, I found some 0.75mm round stock I can cut up for the gun barrels. Next I'll start up on the engine. Here I've painted it in burnt iron with copper highlighting on the pipes. Now I don't know if the Centaurus had copper inlet and exhaust pipes or brass or steel or whatever, but they look cool and will be mainly hidden away anyway. Then at the rear end of the cowling is a ring supporting the exhaust stubs. These stubs are really well modelled. But here's a big problem. Now, if you dry fit the cowling, in order to keep the right line between the two rings, the cowling ends up with a gap. So either you have to fill the gap, which is huge, or sand down the rings, which is plainly wrong. So what I ended up doing was fitting the bottom of the cowling first and let that set in then put in the top half of the cowling so it sits correctly with the rings. Now I've got some thin flat stock that I can trim and put into the gap in pieces. I've done the same on the other side but just sanded the flat stock a bit first as the gap is a bit smaller and it just needed to be a bit thinner. Set everything in with ultra thin glue and leave it for a while. Next I'll assemble the tailplanes. These come in halves with the moulding injection right in the middle of the leading edge. Something that really makes me fed up. Anyway, that done, you can then glue the halves together. Back to the wings. And if you're doing the wings unfolded, then you put this brace in on either side to support the outer panels. Now I'm having the wings folded, so I'm fitting these blanking hinge pieces at the end of the stub. Then I can add the top surface of the inner wings. The outer panels come in halves, of course. The first thing to do is to cut off these hinge cover plates. Then add the blanking piece to the inside end, same yellow colour of course. Pop the other skin on and tape it all up to set. Back to the fuselage and I'm adding the control surfaces. First the tailplanes go on. Then the elevators in the back of those. And finally the rudder at the back of the fin. The ailerons can go into the finished outer wing sections as well. A couple of other things to do, assemble the wheels. Take care to line up the flat spots properly. Now I need to make some canopy masks, so what I do is lay over some masking tape on the part, push into the corners of the frame with a wooden stick, and then cut into the frame edge with a very sharp point of a knife or a scalpel. For the canopy, I use plastic tape for the curved edges, then paper for the rest. The windshield goes into place in the fuselage with some clear PVA such as contactor clear or micro crystal clear. Leave that a while to dry, I'd say an hour at the very least. Now I've sealed off the cockpit and primed the plane. Now I'm adding some black pre-shading lines. I've never done this before, so I thought I'd see whether it works. Then a coat of Sky Type S on the undersides and most of the side of the fuselage and the tail. When it's dry, tape off the when it's dry, tape it up and then spray the top of the fuselage and the upper surfaces of the wings and tail with extra dark sea grey. The cowling and propeller boss are going to be orange, so I've given them a coat of light grey as a base. And when that's dry, the orange can go on. With the huge propeller, I've masked the tips and then I'm adding some white as a base coat followed by the final yellow. Now with the spraying done on the plane, I can add a coat of varnish and then start on the decals. Now remember to use P2 
plenty of decal setting solutions such as decal fix or micro set to help get it into the cracks. The canopy that I masked earlier has been given some black primer around the edges. Then I'll add the top coat of extra dark sea grey. I've also put some black primer onto the exhaust shields. When that's dried, I'll add dark aluminium. And back on the cowling, I'll pick out those lovely exhaust stubs with burnt iron. Then the cowling can go onto the nose. More decals, and these stupid things are supposed to represent the lights. Really not very good when even a 172nd Tempest has proper clear panels. Anyway, after that, onto the gear and the main legs attached to the main gear doors, like so. Then the main leg sits into a kind of cup in the wing. And then you add this actuator. One end goes into the back of the spar here. The other has two prongs that fit into the bottom of the gear leg. When it's all put together, it's really quite sturdy. The inner gear door goes into place and it's held upright in position by those little actuators we saw earlier. If you're lucky, they won't be broken by now. Then the wheels can go on. Do double check the position of the flat spot. It should be towards the tail end of the plane. The tail wheel assembly comes in two parts. This leg pokes through the frame, then attaches to it. The leg then sits at the back of the tail wheel bay, the tail wheel retracted forwards on the Sea Fury. Then the tail wheel itself can go on. followed by the tail gear doors. There is another small door to add to each main gear leg. Then the arrestor hook can be put in. The small end hooks over a peg built into the bottom of the tail. Then there's this small stirrup for the pilot. This can be out or retracted as you wish. Now I'm taking the masks off the windshield and canopy and checking the paint lines. Now the propeller, there's a shaft that pokes through the back of the fuselage plate, through the base plate and into the propeller itself. The spinner then sits on top. Just touch up all the orange around the bottom, then the propeller assembly can go into the nose. Looks great. Next, the main wing hinge goes into each stub. Leave it to dry for a while. And in that time, I can complete the wings with the lamps. I can add the pitot tube. And while I think about it, add the canopy to the fuselage. Then with the hinges fixed, I can slot the outer wing panels on top. There are two other pieces that stick up to contact the outer panel for it to sit firmly and at the right angle. If one side is more folded than the other, just support it at the correct angle while it dries. Then go around with a quick touch up of all the paint and my Sea Fury is complete. There we have it. You know, I really, really, really wanted to love this kit and I'm afraid I really, really can't. Um, the issue with the engine cowling is just awful how they didn't spot that in production builds i have no idea the actuators for the uh, main wheel doors that stick out the bottom and get broken why couldn't they just have been pieces that you added later on i don't know anyway other than that it's a nice kit it's not a great kit it's not as great as for example the most recent hurricane but you know if you want a sea fury it's pretty good
and the decal options are quite sweet. I do like orange, so I got to build a Dutch one. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, then please do remember to subscribe to the channel through clicking the link in the bottom right corner there. Have a great week. I will see you next time.